Welcome to the Intuitive Rising Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Brooks. This is a podcast that invites you to remember who you are, return to yourself, and rise into your highest and best soul self. Every week, I will be sharing inspiring conversations about topics that hold keys to your awakening. My mission as an international evidential psychic medium, Reiki practitioner, and intuitive mentor is to help you rise into who you were born to be. Enjoy the show. Hey gang, welcome back to another episode. I am so glad that you're back. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope that whenever and wherever this episode finds you, that you're doing well and that you are happy and healthy. I felt nudged to come on today and to talk a little bit about vivid dreams. So I'm just going off the cuff here. I'm just going to share what comes in, share some thoughts and feelings and um, a recent dream that I had. And so let's go. Let's go. First of all, we are just a few days, five days post full moon. We had a full moon in Leo on January 25th. Today at the time of this recording is January 30th. So You know, I was definitely feeling that moon. I don't know about you. I was okay the night of sleep wise. Certain certain moons really, really affect my sleep, quality of sleep. I slept that night, certainly, but it was very, very light sleep. Um, Then the other day, a couple days after that, I had insomnia the whole night, like literally was lying awake at four in the morning, which is not really my usual. I'm not somebody that usually um, suffers from it insomnia, thank goodness, because I just find it so, so um, intolerable really is the best word for it. I find it so frustrating. I'm somebody that really, really needs my sleep and in general feels kind of sleepy all the time (laughs) with some of my, uh, with the work I do, the energetic work I do, but also the fact that I've got some thyroid stuff going on. So in general, can't afford to lose my sleep. All of that to say, I have been having some crazy, vivid dreams as of lately, and I know I'm not alone because I put up a few polls on my social media in the last few days. You know, how are you sleeping? Um, Are you having crazy, vivid dreams? And the general consensus is I'm not sleeping well, and the dreams are off the hook right now. So let's talk a little bit about vivid dreams. I first want to start by talking about spiritual visitation like a loved one visiting in your dreams. This is very different than, you know, just dreaming about God knows what, something random or seemingly random. Let's start there. So when you dream of a loved one in spirit, I would say that almost in every occasion, that is a visit from that loved one in spirit. If you feel like they are, like talking with you, interacting with you, then that's a visit. The reason I said the vast majority of dreams about a past life loved one is a visit is because there have been times that I've dreamed of a past loved one, but they were just kind of like there. They weren't interacting with me, or maybe there was something about them or some pain about something that was connected to them that I might dream about. And that I feel is less of a visit and maybe more of your subconscious saying, hey, Like, I want you to work on this and release and this is where the healing needs to be. But for the most part, if you're dreaming of a loved one and there's some interaction, you know, like I I would say, please, please, please trust that. There seems to be a commonality among people that I've spoken to, but also clients and, and myself, my own experiences. When I dream of a past loved one, I wake up and there's almost a period of disorientation. Like I think for a moment, like, did that really happen? Like, was I really with them? Because it feels as if you were with them. So it feels like there is more of an attachment to the dream and to what's happened versus like some dreams we just feel like we are observing versus like in the middle of it. It feels like this is directly connected to us. And it's personal, first of all. There's usually a feeling of peace and comfort that comes over you, Um, the warm fuzzies, you know, Um, especially if we have the awareness that that was a visit versus, you know, your mind reminding you of a person that's no longer here and that makes you feel sad. Like if you have the awareness 
that that's a visit, it's more likely to put you in a place of, oh my goodness, like that makes me feel so peaceful to know that we're still connected in that way and that they can visit me this way. When we dream of past loved ones, I mean, I think that's just really a way to, for spirit to, and for your loved ones, that's what I mean when I say spirit in this context, for them to say, hey, like we're still here, we're still here, we're still here. You know, and the only difference between that and say like someone like me who actively is working with spirit people and connecting to them, um, you know, is that I'm listening, I'm listening, but I don't always listen, right? Like sometimes there might be something coming in personally for me and maybe I'm just not recognizing it. And so then I might dream of a past loved one and they bring it through in a way where I can't ignore it, right? Um, but yeah, I haven't had a dream with a past loved one in quite a while. The most recent one was, was with my nanny and that was a couple months ago. She did pass in the end of May of 2023. And certainly there was a bunch of dreams in there too, like during the summer months that I dreamt of her and and it was upsetting, like some things were coming up that made me feel upset. And I know that that wasn't her visiting me trying to poke the bear, so to speak, or make me feel upset, that that's not something that our loved ones in spirit would ever want to do. It's more my subconscious bringing up something um, that's connected to my nanny or my nanny's passing and the pain and the grief I feel and bringing it to the surface so that it can be dealt with rather than suppressed. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the sign. So you're going to feel this feeling of like, did that really just happen? Um, you're going to feel comforted, probably very likely, especially if you've got that awareness, as I said, um, you're going to remember it in vivid detail. You're going to remember it. Like I can tell you in vivid detail, I can recall dreams that I've had from past loved ones, like one I had particularly from my uncle John a couple weeks after he passed. Um, I was newly pregnant with my now 15 year old son and he came in to tell me all kinds of stuff about my son. Didn't know I was having a son at that time, but he told me and he, he revealed a whole bunch of stuff to me. And I knew that to be true. And also I can recall that dream as if it happened five minutes ago. So I think that's a really uh, and another common piece that I personally have experienced, but also I've heard from clients uh, that they also remember those dreams very vividly. Now, just yesterday, I was connecting to a client and she asked me at the end um, about dreams and spirit dreams and things. And uh, she said she had the stream of her mother soon after she passed and her mother I think she said she saw this hill and there's a tree at the top and her mom was standing under the tree and she was climbing up the tree to come closer and closer to her mother. But just right before she got to her mother, she woke up and she said, I, I know that was just like to say that I'm, she's there and she's happy and safe, but like, I'm not going to be jo joining her anytime soon. Like I, I don't climb the mountain and get next to her for, for until it's my turn to go. But not only that, she described the vivid, colors that she saw around her and that's something that i think is really really common in dreams with our past loved ones too is the colors are out of this world and that might be different than just a run-of-the-mill dream where we're dreaming about something more nonsensical uh, a dream that is not a message from our subconscious or is not a message from a past loved one maybe we don't even take note of the colors maybe that's not even showing up as something that's important or noteworthy but it seems to be a commonality in dreams with loved ones in spirit and she said the sky was just a blue that doesn't exist in this world and that really reminded me of a message that spirit gave me at the beginning of my journey um, coming up on six years ago now. And I was learning, I was like practicing working with spirit and really building up my confidence, you know, to the point where I was, I knew that this was something I wanted to do is what I, is what I'm trying to say. I knew that working with people, especially with my mediumship abilities was something that I saw in my path and I felt like was for me and also felt really good. Uh, so I wanted to learn it as best I could. And I did that myself, you know, I just kind of just practiced and followed the breadcrumbs. And um, one of the first messages that came through from spirit 
of intentional connection. So like when I say, I want to connect to spirit, what do you have to say to me? That's what I mean by intentional. One of the first messages that came through for me when I did that was, why do you want to live in black and white when you can live in technicolor? And I will never forget that message. You know, it's kind of like, why do you want to live in the 3D, you know, in the matrix, in, in the regular world where you are not aware of what's just beyond this level of perception that's on the other side of it, that is otherworldly, that is technicolor. And so I shared that my, with my client yesterday when she described the sky being a color that was otherworldly. And I was like, yeah, that's what the colors are like over there, I think. And so those are some ways that you can recognize dreams, um, like that they are dreams from loved ones and you can trust that. It's just a knowing and a feeling. And I want you to feel comfortable asking your loved ones in spirit to visit you that way. You might not be fully ready uh, to some degree in having them show up for you in other ways. And so you prefer to just kind of be eased into it a little bit. And you're like, hey, come through when I'm having a dream. I need help with this. And just wait and see. Just wait and see. More often than not, that will happen. Be patient. Spirit doesn't work on our time. They work on their time, which by the way, there is no time and space. <laughs> so be patient with that. But yeah, um, you know, and then we have these subconscious dreams that are showing us something, whether it's something we need to heal or they're showing us a path or a breadcrumb to follow. And so I wanted to share this dream I had the other day, like I said, a couple days after the full moon in Leo, and it was so vivid, and I actually felt like I was there. And I feel like this has to be a connection to a past life of mine, or, you know, something ancestrally, like, I don't know, but I'm going to share with you. Okay. So I had this dream that I was in North Carolina. Okay. Side note, never been to North Carolina. As a Canadian, I haven't traveled a ton. I have never been more south than, further south than Arlington, Virginia, which is just outside of DC. That's the furthest south I've ever been. Um, I've never been to North Carolina. I've never, I don't know much about North Carolina. And to be honest, the most I know about North Carolina comes through from my watching of Outlander. <laughs> Right and Outlander, um, there is a lot of North Carolina references, which is you know, where they Jamie and Claire end up when they come to the United States um, from Scotland, and so that's really all I know uh, about North Carolina at all, at all, and and I don't even know if that's filmed in North Carolina. That doesn't matter. The fact is, I've never been to North Carolina, so it's kind of interesting. I'm like, why am I dreaming about North Carolina? These are what I'm thinking about the next day. Um, so I'm there, and I'm on the top of a mountain. But it's not like I'm hiking and I'm in the middle of nowhere. I am on an observation deck. And I know that I'm in western North Carolina. I know I'm not near the sea. I know I'm further west than that. I know that I'm somewhere near like the Smoky Mountains or the Blue Ridge Mountains. I know that I'm somewhere near maybe the Tennessee border, but that's all I know. And at the time I was like, I don't even know. Are those two states next to each other? I think so, you know, but I just had this knowing that's not, that's where I was. And I was with my husband and I was also with my youngest child. And I remember like, I have a great fear of heights um, in this lifetime. And I know that that comes from a past life of me falling to my death. Um, but I am really scared of heights. And if I'm somewhere where there's like railings and we're up high, I get really, really kind of nervous. Um, and so I could kind of be like a little bit of like a helicopter parent, um, not with my older kids, but definitely with my younger son, because I'm just like so fearful that he's going to fall over or flip over the rail or something like that. So I'm there with my husband and my young son. We're on this observation deck and I am making like a vlog or something a video diary or you know video of what I'm doing and I'm asking my husband to take a picture of me on this observation deck with the back of the mountain visible which would be hard to miss because it's literally all around me and I'm standing on the top of this this ridge like I said and it's as far as you can see it's just trees and valleys and slopes and it's absolutely stunning. And even as I recall this and I'm saying it to you, I can feel as if I was there. 
And it felt familiar to me in a way that when I look at videos or pictures or, you know, what have you about Scotland, I feel that way as well. So I was like, interesting. And it was all beautiful fall foliage as far as your eye could see. And I was asking him to take a picture of me, but, you know, I kept uh, feeling like I had to watch my son. So I was like distracted because I was worried he was going to fall off the observation deck. And then he took a picture and then it got dark and I woke up and I was like, huh, what's that all about? Right. So I didn't think too much about it. I didn't like go on Google and look up North Carolina or mountains or observation decks, nothing. It was just like, huh, interesting. Um, the next day I opened Facebook and the first thing that's on my feed is from a Huga group. So Huga is H-Y-G-G-E. It's not pronounced as it looks, I know. And it really is the art of cozy living. And um, people just post pictures of, you know, their cozy spaces or what makes them feel cozy. And so somebody posted a picture of basically what I saw in my dream. So it's the sunset scene and you can see the mountains and the trees as far as you can see. There's like a dip with the valley and they're standing on, or the picture's taken from a deck. And so she says, um, from my back deck in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. And I'm just like, whoa, that's like, it gave me a, like a jolt. And even now I've got like goosebumps. And I went, whoa, interesting. So I just commented underneath and I was like, thank you so much for sharing this. I, I love it. It makes me happy to look at. And I said, randomly, I had a dream last night about the Blue Ridge Mountains and I was standing on the observation deck and I've never been to North Carolina. I'm a Canadian. I've never been down that far south. And I was like, anyways, just wanted to share. Thank you so much for sharing the picture. And then I get a notification like an hour later of a wow emoji she comments back and she goes, whoa, that sounds like the observation deck at Mount Mitchell. And I'm like, oh, interesting. I was like, well, now I'm definitely going to have to Google all the things and go down the rabbit hole. And so I did. And it was Mount Mitchell that I saw. There is an observation deck. It is up quite high. It's raised off the ground, even the deck. And there's ramps and things like that. All the things that I saw. And I was just like, this is intense. Um, like, what, what does this mean? So then after that, <laughs> I'm reading this book that I, is called Horns of the Goddess. It is by Do Dolores Cannon. And uh, it's a book um, where she visits uh, past lives um, or her, her clients are uh, you know, re regressed back through hypnosis to past lives of theirs. And this book is a collection of lives from a time during the Inquisition and a time before religion. You know, it's druids, witchiness, pagans, goddess kind of energy and stories. And so um, I'm reading this and I almost like spit my coffee out when I get to this certain part. And this person who has regressed into this time period, I feel like in the seven, 700s maybe, um, she starts talking about different kind of like elementals and, and things that uh, do exist uh, in this realm, you know, but are almost kind of not not visible to certain people. Um, because of their perception, right? So it's kind of essentially saying like someone who's very connected to their, um, to themselves, to their intuition, uh, this wise woman kind of energy, were able to see elementals and things like that because they were open to it because they were connected to the great goddess. Anyhow, so I'm reading this, she's talking about little people like gnomes and fairies and things. And then she brings up what she calls white ladies, and I swear to you, as soon as I read this word, I'm just like given a jolt. And I, I know by now that when I get that jolt, it means pay attention. This is leading you somewhere, just like I had from the dream. Um, so I read a little bit further along and she's talking about what she calls white ladies. And they are essentially like almost invisible. They kind of are like a puff of uh, energy, kind of cloudy, like like versus like an actual um person um and 
they're connected to the element of air and wind, and they use wind. They brew up the storms. They are able to move clouds, you know, um, so that a cloud, one crop is able to receive rain when it needs it versus another, et cetera, et cetera. And really what they were all about is they were really connected to the great goddess, connected to Mother Earth, and we're here to balance and to make sure that one place was not receiving more than another, that you weren't taking more than you were giving, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just kind of like, whoa. And the reason I'm like, whoa, <laughs> is because I've shared before, I know I have, that um, I had an experience in a meditation a year or so ago where I was seeing myself at the edge of a cliff. Um, it didn't look like me, but I knew it was me in another life. My hair was wild. It was all over the place. The wind was whipping it. And I had my hands up in the air like this and I was moving clouds. Okay. And there was like thunder and lightning. And what was coming into me clear audiently in this moment, that moment was you're connected to the wind, use wind medicine, air elements. This is where your magic is. And I was like, okay. So I remember I journaled about it. It was one of those it was one of those images that came into me that stuck, you know, I think there's definitely something there. It's not to say that I haven't ever brought other anything else in visually or clairaudiently when I'm meditating or having an experience like that. But the things that stick, the vivid things, the things that stick into your knowledge, there's a reason for that. There's a reason that stick stuck with me. And so I'm like, okay, really cool, interesting. I don't think I shared it with anybody or very many people. Fast forward a few months later, have an Akashic Records reading with Emily, who came on this podcast and talked about the records before. And she brought through a lifetime of mine on Atlantis, where I was connected to the clouds, connected to the weather, made sure, you know, to keep balance um, with the sun and the rain. So made sure like, okay, this over here, this crop needs rain over here needs more sun and was able to kind of navigate the weather like that. And so I was like, okay, a second, a second piece of information to say kind of the same thing. So then I'm reading this book, Dolores Cannon book. She's talking about the white ladies and she's talking about the same thing. And I'm like, you can't make this up. So then I go online and I Google the white ladies. And what comes up is this Wikipedia page that says La Dame's Blanche or La Dame's Blanche. I don't know how to pronounce it, but essentially French translation to white ladies. And they say this is kind of like a mythical folklore uh, character in a certain part of the world, very steeped in European folklore, um, a white witch. And I'm like, huh, interesting. Then my mind takes me to, hmm, I feel like they talked about white witches or La Dame's Blanche in Outlander. Big Outlander fan here, as I mentioned earlier. And so I Google that and it comes up that in season two, yeah, there was reference to that. Um, and that Jamie was actually able to convince someone um, that Claire was a white witch. She was a white lady, La Dame's Blanche, um, you know, working with the light, working for the good versus you know, a witch working with dark and spells and all that kind of stuff. And so not that there's much difference between the two. I think it's just public perception. Anyhow, um, so I was like, whoa, that's so interesting. Then following the breadcrumbs even more. And I'm like, wait a second, why am I thinking about Outlander and that connection to the white ladies and oh my goodness, North Carolina. Um, North Carolina is where Jamie and Claire ended up when they came to North America and they had their homestead there um, before they went back to Scotland. And I know that a lot of Scots ended up in that area of North America. And I thought, hmm, interesting. Again, it's kind of like my own spirit's way of me for me connecting the dots. Because remember, spirit will use our frame of reference. So like, oh, she watches Outlander. Okay, let's get her to connect that this way. And so I just find all of that very interesting. The place, you know, um, the message, the feeling that I'd been there before. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is like past life connection. 
if this is an ancestral thing, I have to dig back even further. I know just last night I was looking at my ancestry.ca account and I was talking to my aunt Karen about this um, other side of the family though, about um, the McLeods who came through from uh, the Highlands uh, during the Scottish clearances, which is this thing that happened um, back in that time in Scotland where um, a lot of people had to leave because they had nowhere to go. And so a lot of people came to the North Americas and, and Nova Scotia in, in, in particular is where my ancestors ended up. And so we're talking about these Scottish ancestors that we have, um, the McLeods, which is my my paternal grandmother's maiden name. She was a McLeod. And I was digging in her family a little bit and it's not even that far back. It's only like, you know, a couple generations back um, where they're like early settlers in this area of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And there's like, um, there is a road named after them. They were the earliest settlers on this particular ridge, a ridge, okay, which is interesting, a mountain. And so her and I are talking about that and just being so interested in ancestry. And she and I may have made plans for when I move back home this summer, we're going to go on a little road trip and put our feet on the ground of our ancestors our McLeod ancestors. And so um, I'm now encouraged to dig a little bit deeper on my paternal, no, sorry, my maternal grandfather's side, my mother's father, who had talked about in the grief episode a couple of weeks ago, whose uh, ancestors, some came from Scotland to an area in New Brunswick called St. George and Latite, um, not too far from the main border. And um, some ancestors came through New England and are very connected to um, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, things like that. But I'm going to dig even further back on that line to see if there's any North Carolina connection. They might have just kept making their, their way up, right? Because I know there's some war, there's Confederation war references in that side of the family. They were a lot of loyalists in that side of the family. So it makes sense maybe that they moved their way up the Eastern seaboard from North Carolina into Connecticut and then eventually came over to Canada. So that's kind of cool, this ancestry connection. And uh, then today, a past client reached out to me and she was like, did you say the other day that you had a dream about mountains in North Carolina? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, because like really randomly, I was looking at something and I found this. And she sent me this link to this place in Asheville, North Carolina, which by the way, is the closest city slash town to the mountain that I just talked about. And she said they have this retreat. It's called Ancestral Retreats, I think. There's like stone circles and there's, it's just amazing. Um, anyhow, she's like, they offer like their space for retreats. Or they have like a writing retreat. They're connected to the indigenous cultures and the land and traditions and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, I just thought about you when I heard about North Carolina because they do this and the indigenous connection and the writing connection. And I was like, whoa. Then her and I start talking about the reading that I did for her. When I connected to her energetically, I remember that we connected a bit to some past life information and this particular area on the map came forward as a place where she would have lived life, at least one life before. And that was the Brittany region of France. And so last, literally last night, I was on, like I said, Ancestry.ca, and I looked into the DNA um, breakdown. Um, it says I'm like 78% Scottish, and then there's um, like 13% uh, in uh, European. Uh, and then uh, I never clicked before at this particular button, but there's a button that says see more. So I clicked on that, and it literally breaks it down more to the region, and it says the English Channel Islands and Brittany, France. Brittany is the region right there. So if you've got England, you know, here, and then you got France here, and there's a couple channel islands right here. That's all the same area. And I was like, whoa, like, that is wild. And get this, that's the area of the world that um, in the book I referred to, the horns of the goddess, one of those past lives that came forward from one of Dolores' clients was visiting, regressed back to a past life in that area. 
<laughs> right? It's like it just continues and continues and continues. And so I'm sharing this because I want you to embrace and get excited about spirit messages and about learn to follow spirits breadcrumbs, you know, like, I feel like someone like me, or someone like you who is listening, who's on the spiritual path, I feel like a lot of it is just about noticing. And it's about people that are that notice that notice. And I think that's a highly sensitive person quality. Naturally, you know, it's like we are highly sensitive because we are noticing because we are sensitive to um, our environment and to other people, etc. And we notice on the flip side of that, that can be, that can feel a lot sometimes. We can be empowered and work with it, certainly. But on the flip side of that, I think it allows us to really be in life and to take note of things that maybe other people don't, like how beautiful certain things look, how the light reflects through the trees or the sound of the crunch of the snow under your feet. Like these are gifts. Um, and so I think that I feel that sensitive people have this art of noticing down. But I also feel like it's something that you can become more consistent and practice with so that you become more aware of those things. And I think that when you do, you learn to follow the breadcrumbs. And dreams are just one example of how to follow the breadcrumbs. So, you know, I could have just gone, okay, like I had that dream and then here I am and seeing the same mountaintop in this group on Facebook. Coincidence close the browser, move on with life, right? And maybe a lot of us do that. But for me, I just know that I can trust the little jolt, the little whoosh of energy that I get. There's a knowing, there's a recognition that comes through. And I know through practice, by the way, that when I get that, it means keep going. There's something here for you. And I want you guys to be more in touch with that because that's how you live intuitively. And that's how you really connect in with the universe and what the universe has to show you and offer you. And it's a really exciting ride. It really, really is. So I hope you enjoyed this episode about dreams. You know, just pay attention to dreams. Maybe create a little dream journal. See what happens. You never know. You never know. Let life surprise you. I feel like that's a theme for us lately. Let life surprise you. Have a great day. See you next week. If you have enjoyed this episode, please consider hopping on over to wherever you listen to your podcast and giving it a five star review. Thank you so much in advance. If you'd like to keep in touch, please head over to my website, theintuitiverising.com to keep up with all the things that I have been doing. I also have a private Facebook community for people just like you. It's called the Intuitive Rising Community. All you got to do is request to join and I will let you in. Keep rising.